All right. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Financial Traders Mindset. And I'm doing an impromptu video today on Aperture Finance because they recently released the recurring rebalance tool. So I just kind of wanted to do a quick video on this because um, I've been getting a lot of questions on it, uh, what strategies to run on it, how to manage it, how to do this and that and different communities asking. So I'm just like, you know what, instead of answering everybody uh, with the same answer over and over, I figured I would just do a video to, you know, to reference you guys over to it. Right. So so you guys can check it out. All right. So uh, I'm just going to give my overview, which is my over, overall uh, thoughts on it. Um, I haven't used it personally. Um, I just kind of messed with it a little bit, just kind of tinkered around with the with the tools and the little triggers and everything. Just try to see, uh, get a feel for it. Um, I manu I usually just manually manage my LPs, but, uh, I really want to get over to start using this. Um, but anyways, uh, I was looking at this and I want to give my thoughts on it, right? I want to give you my overall thoughts, how to use it. Uh, what does each feature mean on this recurring rebalance and, uh, what kind of strategies to run? You know, if you're like bullish, bearish, neutral, right? Um, I'll just kind of give a brief overview of how to set something up using this tool. All right. So here's the page app.apertureFinance. Uh, you go over to the recurring rebalance over here and I already have it set up here, right? So I have a small LP here, Matic USDC. Um, it's, it's just sitting there. It's been sitting there for a while. So I was able to use this as an example, just to kind of given, you know, just kind of check it out. Right. So what you have here is a trigger setup. And what this trigger does is that you set up a, you set up these parameters so that the tool will automatically take over the you know, managing your LP, right? So when it hits those, when it triggers those parameters, it will take the liquidity, rebalance it, rearrange it into a new pool uh, every time that that same trigger hits over and over, right? So in this case, you have a trigger for price and a trigger for ratio, okay? So first of all, you got price, right? So it's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, in this instance, for Matic, if the price of Matic, in this case, gets above 1.6 or 16 cents above the spot price, they'll rebalance for you, right? Or below 16 cents, the spot, the spot price, they'll rebalance for you, right? Um, kind of make it a little bit more realistic as people like to go a little tighter. You know, you could go 0 0.05, you know, on here and it'll rebalance it either five cents above current price or five cents below current price. All right. Okay. So got a little visitor here, but uh, okay. So just picking off, picking up where I left off. Uh, so yeah, you get a trigger here, five cents above five cents below. So if it hits any of those triggers, what happens here is that you get a rebalance here. And I, I believe this token terms, uh, particularly this section here i think i think something's off here right I'm, I'm thinking it should be showing the price of matic per usdc but i think it's showing ticks or maybe it's percentages um because it's very similar here right like if i move this so there's a bug there i've already let them know about it so um but when they fix it uh you should have the price of Matic, right? Like say if it gets five cents below, then you want it to rebalance. Um, I guess it would, this would have to be like point like zero two cents below, right? Or whatever you want, right? But you can't enter it there. So I, we're going to need clarification on that. I don't know if that's, I don't know what's going on here, but it's, um, yeah, I'm not sure what they mean. Maybe the amount of Matic per USDC. Uh, if they could put like a little infograph here or something that kind of just explains it, it would be great. 
but I'm thinking either it's like ticks or maybe it's uh, a bug here that's just matching up with the percentage here. Um, or it could be the amount of Matic per USDC that you want it below from the current the current price, right? Like if you want it uh, four Matic per USDC below the current price, but man, that would require a lot of calculation. Um, but I guess you would only do it once, but we'll wait for, for some clarification on that. Hopefully they put a little infographic here or something to explain that. Because uh, I've gotten questions on that. I was just like, I don't know, like, especially on Manic, I'm not sure. So, so anyways, uh, I'm assuming this would be Matic per USDC. You could do that or you could have the rebalance action taken on a percentage basis. Okay, so you could have the percentages set as well. Now, what this means is that you could have the width of the pool on the downside and on the upside specified in a, in a percentage width. Or, um, you know, if you want it... If you wanted to maintain like a, a, it's kind of like a, I would say kind of like a, uh, like an automated pool, like Arrakis or um, Gamma, right? Where it just kind of maintains a width around price, right? Like say if, you know, let, let's just make it more specific here. Like if you really wanted to run a tight pool and you don't care like about impermanent loss and and the and the price is just or the volume is just so high that the yields are so high, say like on a shit coin that's just really generating a lot of yields. You want to run a really tight pool and all you're concerned about is just extracting that yield as much as you can, as quickly as you can for as long as it lasts, because, you know, those don't usually usually they end up fizzling out and then the, the volume goes away and then you're just ready to withdraw. Right. So <clears throat> if you're just on a you just want to extract as much yield as possible. This could be a good one, right? Like uh, say the shit coin is like at 80 cents and you're like, every time it gets, you know, even like one cents below and one cent above, right? That's where it just kind of rebalances right around price and just keeps price centered. And you could even like tighten this up even more like 1%. That's like extreme and it's it's kind of like it is a truly like automated strategy, right? Like a like a, just a yield generating strategy. You could really extract as much yield as you can from from like some of these opportunities that are generating a lot of volume, right? That's where I can see that being of huge value because to do that manually is like nearly impossible. I mean, just the amount of time, the amount of uh, effort, right? Um, swap in between the pool. So Aperture can take care of all that right here. That's perfect for that. Now, let me move over to the ratio. Ratio is good too. Uh, now, this depends like, you know, I think this would be more so suited for a directional strategy. Now here, let, let me explain here. So I'm going to switch this uh, trigger to a ratio, right? Trigger setup. Set to ratio. Now, say if you're uh, if you're bullish on Matic, right? Now we know that as price goes up in a in a liquidity pool, the the amount of that asset uh, sells off, right? Like say if the price of Matic goes up in in value, you're selling off Matic on the way up, right? So say if you start out with a 50-50 uh, LP, you know, or even if you're if you're really bullish, say you're like 90-10, right? Say you're 90-10 and you have 90% Matic, 10% USDC. And you're like, okay, whenever you're just like, whenever the, the ratio of my LP of Matic gets below 80%, I want it to rebalance. If you had 90, a 90% 90 Matic in here and you're like, okay, I want to maintain a 90% ratio uh, or even say like, keep it tight, like 85%. When the, when the ratio of my pool gets below 85% or if you're a little bit, if you want to give it some room and let it just, because, you know, Matic can move 5% in a day, right? So say like if it gets below 50%, right? 
or uh, let's say 50%, right? And then you want to, you're like, okay, save the trigger. Um, what is the ratio that I want to rebalance back into? Just for, to keep it simple, say it gets below 50% in the ratio. Now it rebalances. You could set this back up to, to 90%. Oh, sorry. It's going to have to be Matic. 90% Matic. I want you to, every time this drops below 50%, I want you to rebuy, rebalance, swap back, swap the USDC back so we have a 90-10 ratio and restake that pool. All right. But not only that, but you also have this. You have an enter tick width. Right. And this is a question I've gotten a lot. So this means that you define and this is really this is really good because I mean it's it seems a little complicated, but it's not. It's not really complicated. You define the tick spacing or the 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 width of that pool. Now, if you're like, okay, well, how wide do I want it to be? Well, you can do that pretty easy. Um, I, I wish I wish there was a tool here to kind of visualize the spacing, right? So what I did was I just opened up the liquidity management tab <clears throat> in a separate tab here. I already set it up here. And now you could kind of see, okay, what would the tick spacing be, right? And what is a tick space on, on this particular pool, right? It's the... It's the Matic USDC 0.05%. You can see it right here, all right? So, okay. Well, how much is one tick? Well, let's see. Let's let's get let's get as close to price as possible, right? This is probably here we go. Okay, zero percent. So one tick, 0.1. Two ticks, three ticks, four ticks, five ticks. A tick is just the smallest amount, the smallest amount or amount of spacing between prices in a particular fee tier, which is 0.05%, that allows liquidity to be staked, right? So what did I say? We're at five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? You're like, well, okay, 80 cents is pretty tight. Current price is 80.9. It's very tight. It's like 0.008 cents wide right so you're like okay maybe i need it wider right like maybe let's get it to like just to make it simple five percent here so if each tick was 0.1 and we're at five point one percent and we're at five percent now that's 10 ticks per percentage right so you're at 50 ticks just on the width to the downside but you also have to set the upside as well say you want to you want to keep it, you want to make it so that this ratio here, if you see it on my, where I'm highlighting, you want Matic to be at 90%. And this is kind of giving you a general idea of what the rebalances are going to look like moving forward and uh, what to kind of expect. So just kind of keep that in mind. Like, like this is very dynamic, right? You know, providing liquidity is very dynamic. Um, but as you understand it, you can kind of get a general idea of the of how to manage it, right? <laughs> I, I would say this is even like more so for more advanced LPs, more that really understand how to control and permanent loss, uh, how to structure their liquidity pools, uh, understand slippage, price impact. I would suggest I would highly suggest starting out very small and using it like trying this out. Those very small positions, track them you know, do it for like a few months really and really understand it and, and see how it works. Right. And then get a, get a feel for it. Right. But anyways, so anyways, you say you want to keep going back to our original position here. We want a 90, 10 ratio, right? So what is that going to look like here? Well, we're at 50%. We're going to have to go wider, wider up on the top end till we get to 90%. And what is that going to look like? I have to zoom out a little bit. We're going further out, right? We're in the we're over a dollar right now. Hmm. Okay, that's a little too wide, right? A dollar forty, seventy six to a dollar forty. That's too wide. So I want a hundred and twenty tick spacing, right? 
So 40% on the upper end is actually because 4%, 4% would be 40 ticks. 40% uh, would be 400 ticks. Sorry, I'm, I'm just doing this off the cuff. Very, uh, you know, anyways, let me get back to it. So yeah, so you have a, a uh, 20 tick wide lower range. And then you have a 400 tick upper range, right? So that gives you a dollar thirteen. You like, you know what? I like that. I like. I wouldn't mind selling all my Matic up at a dollar thirteen. Um, uh, the lower end is kind of is pretty tight down here. Um, maybe I would like it a little wider, right? Say let's do like ten percent. Current price is eighty point nine. Your lower price here, 72 cents, 72.8 cents on the lower end of the range. That's your max lower end. And then you have that. Okay. But I need to get this to 90, 10, right? So what is that going to look like? Well, then maybe I need to extend this out a little bit further, right? Maybe tighten this up a little bit. Now you're getting an idea here. Okay. Here we go. So I got 45 ticks on the downside and I have almost 600 ticks on the upside. Okay. Well, maybe it's too wide, right? And then you could adjust it and play with it. But the idea here is that you get the idea of the amount of ticks and you see here. Okay. If you're satisfied with this and you're like, okay, 45 plus 600, right? This is make that an even 600. There you go. 600 plus 46, yeah, because price is probably just moving a little bit. Okay, 45 plus 600, that's 645 ticks, right? So you come here, you're like, okay, let's pop in 645 ticks. There you go. You set your, your gas fee ceiling, right? You know, the max amount you want to pay. The idea here with uh, the gas, you want to set up a gas fee ceiling that's reasonable, but not too high, right? Because if... If gas is too high when this rebalances, <clears throat> that means there's a lot of volatility going on and there's a higher risk of slippage and price impact. So you want to you want this to trigger when volatility subsides, liquidity pools better around price, right? Things settle down and then that's when you want to rebalance. That's where you get the best pricing, okay? Uh, this is a little tip there. You don't want to be rebalancing in chaos, right? You want to be in the market while the chaos is going on, you want to be capturing those fees. You don't want to be rebalancing during that time. Okay, so there's that, right? Now, I'm not done there yet. I have, you know, you also have the ratio above. This is like if you're, if you're like uh, more, uh, if you are, want to, if, if, if say price is trending down, Right with Matic, you're going to be buying more Matic, which means the ratio would increase. Right, it would increase as price goes down. Right, because you're buying more Matic, and more of your inventory is becoming uh, the majority of that inventory is becoming more Matic. Right, so you're holding more Matic, so it increases in ratio. So this would be like a scenario where you're like, well, I like Matic, but I don't like it that much. I don't want to hold more than like 55% in my pool, right? So when it hits, when the ratio of my Matic gets above 55%, I want it to rebalance and get it back below, uh, let's say 40% or back to 40%, right? And then, and then you set up the tick spacing based on what I showed you earlier. You know, you go through this again and just kind of, kind of get an idea of what the rebalance would look like to get tighter, but still maintain that 40-60 ratio, right? So you can go further tighter. You're like, I want to go tighter here. I want to get up to like, I want to get down to 95. Okay, cool. So I got to bring the lower range back up. And then you see like now you're back to 60, 40, right? And now your price range is 64 cents to 95 cents. You're like, oh, cool. I like that. What is the tick spacing there? Well, I got 20% on the downside, which is 200 ticks. And I have 18% on the upside, which is 180 ticks. So that's 380 ticks wide, 
Cool. I like it to maintain that that type of range, that tick spacing based on my 4060. So you come back here. That's 380. And then you just pop it in here, right? And then that's going to be the parameters you set. And it's just going to just, every time that trigger hits, when ratio gets above, boom, you know, it'll rebalance to that. Now you're probably wondering, so we, we cleared that, but now you're probably wondering, well, why are you only selecting a ratio below and a ratio above and not both? Well, this is because your rebalance is going to differ on the upside and on the downside, they're going to be different. Like, okay, say if you're like, if the ratio of Matic gets above 60 or below 40. Okay, well, if it gets above 60%, okay, I want to sell off some Matic so it gets back down to 40%. There's an opportunity here that maybe uh, they could have, now if Aperture's watching, uh, they could probably have a second uh, you know, rebalance action here, right? The rebalance action for the ratio above and another one, a rebalance action for a ratio below, right? Because your liquidity pool ratio would be different on the upside and compared to the downside, right? Like if, if your ratio is above 60%, you're going to have to sell off some Matic to rebalance. If your ratio is below 40%, you need to buy some Matic to bring it up to whatever ratio you want right so you could do like i mean i guess you could do like 30 percent here and it could do it but you know i mean it, it could work this could work here like if you're like okay well if it gets below 30 percent then then rebalance to 40 percent right that could work it could work um Although I, I would like to see, like, say for me, like, if the ratio gets below, right, I would like to buy more Matic when I rebalance or, uh, you know, yeah, I would like to say I would like to buy more Matic or maybe, maybe I don't want to be in as much Matic on the way up because price is moving up and say I have a different strategy for when price gets uh, a little too high, right? I'm like, well, I want to rebalance, but I don't want to rebalance to back to a 40, 60 ratio, right? That's too, um, it's too risky up there. I'm buying Matic near the top. I don't want to buy Matic at the top. I would prefer to buy Matic as it's, uh, using my LP to buy Matic, right? I don't want to be buying Matic at the top, right? Because, you know, whatever ranges I see support resistance on the chart, whatever like voodoo I have, <laughs> when I'm charting, um, you know, I don't want to, I don't, yeah, I just don't want to buy Matic when, when it's moving up, right? Like, so it would be nice to, it, I'm just saying it would be nice to have an option here, but it is possible to just do, you know, to have both here and rebalance. It's just not my preferred way of managing a pool, right? So it would be nice to just duplicate this and have one for the upper and one for the lower, right? All right, so kind of getting a little bit long here with this video, but uh, one, one other thing I had on here, and this tool would be perfect for delta hedging, right? I, I've touched on delta hedging and it's a great way to reduce delta risk, like risk to price, while keeping while allowing you to keep a larger position staked and to generate a lot of fees right like say if you're like okay well matic is producing a lot of volume lately it's generating say like on average 300 to 400 percent aprs but i generally i I don't necessarily like to hold matic right so how can i get some exposure a lot of exposure while minimizing my delta risk, my risk to price, what can I do? <clears throat> so we want to do a, say, a delta neutral position or a delta hedged, right? That's generally neutral, right? Because we all know LPs fluctuate in ratios, right? So um, you want to keep, you want to use a delta hedging position, right? You want 
exposure to Matic, but you don't want to really hold Matic or own too much of it, right? But you want to have a large enough position to take advantage of those yields, right? While the time is there, while the opportunity is there. So what you do is you take USDC that you own, you lend it out to Aave, and then you borrow Matic, right? And then you sell that Matic for USDC, right? Now you sell it all for USDC. So it's all USDC. Now you need to pull it. So you could pull it with Matic that you own, right? That you go and buy and, and, you, and you set up a liquidity pool. Now you're Delta neutral because half of it is borrowed, is borrowed Matic that's sold off for USDC. So essentially you're short Matic there. And then you take the same amount of Matic that's the same value of USDC and you pair it together. So it's a 50-50 pool, 50-50 ratio pool, right? All right, so let's, let's set that up here. It's a 50-50% ratio pool. Now, now you're like, okay, cool. Say like your pool value is 100K to make it simple. Or say $10,000, right? $10,000 to make it simple. Your, the value of your pool is $10,000, but half of it is short, half of it is long. So they're delta neutral. They're not, they're both like, as long as price stays within that, around that price you borrowed Matic at and bought it at, you're essentially just delta neutral, right? And you're generating and incurring and earning those fees while price stays in around that range, right? So now, just knowing that as price moves, that ratio is going to get, is going to, is going to, get off kilter, right? It's going to, it's going to, it's going to move, right? You're going to, if price moves up, you're going to get more short Matic, right? Because you're selling off Matic on the way up. So that means you now have a short position that needs to be satisfied, right? But you're also having less Matic. So um, you start selling off Matic on the way up and on the way down, you're buying more Matic, which means you start becoming more net long. Before you even stake this, this is where you ask the question, well, uh, what is the max amount of exposure do I want to Matic on the short side and on the long side, right? If you start out at zero, do you, do you mind being 10% net short or net long Matic? If you do, cool. Can you go higher? Yeah. The higher you go, the more wiggle room you have in your LP to let it work for you, right? Because you don't want it too tight because then you're managing too much maybe incurring a lot of slippage, maybe it's not worth the time, right? So these are things you got to balance out, right? Liquidity, liquidity and slippage is huge when staking liquidity, right? When managing liquidity pools, you don't want to overmanage to the point where you're losing a lot to slippage, where it's cutting into your yields. You know, I mean, unless you're earning a shit ton of yield and, you know, it'll overcome it. But if you're, if you're playing a game where you're like earning like 100% APR, or even 50% APR, now you have to be very selective on when and how you manage. Let's say in this case, you know, you're earning enough APRs, right? And you're like, you know what? I don't want to be more than 10% net long or 10% net short, right? All right. So you come here, come to this pool. I know this video is getting long, but stick with me here. So you're starting off 50-50. If the ratio gets 60% above, that means that you're buying more Matic, right? Because price is going down. Now, the, the net delta between the 60% ratio of Matic in your pool compared to your delta neutral of 50% Matic, right? Of being short 50% is now 10%, right? Now you're 10% net long. You're like, okay, this is my max. I, I don't want to be more than 10% net long. So this is where I'll rebalance. How about on the downside? Well, I just want to keep it even and balanced. So I'm going to do 10% on the uh, short side as well. I don't want to be more than 10% net short. So you keep this from 50%. You, you don't want to be more than or less than 40% uh, Matic uh, or a Matic ratio in your pool, right? Because that would be mean that you're more than 10% net short, right? So that's your max. Cool. 10% on the upside, 10% on the downside, now it rebalances. You want to rebalance back to 
whatever number you set, right? Well, you started off 50-50, so let's keep it 50-50. So keep it right there, right? Tick spacing. Now this is where you go back here and you kind of get an idea. Remember from earlier in the video, I'm not going to go through this again because this is a very long video. And that's it. It'll just run that strategy until you stop it. And this would be perfect for Delta hedging. And I, I love it for that. Anyways, so I'm going to end it right there. Uh, if you have any questions below, uh, please put them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, you could also join my Discord to get more real-time access to me. It's free to join. You know, I have free channels in there. You can ask your questions. I'm happy to answer them. Other, other members of the community can ask, uh, answer them. You know, my community is based around Uniswap V3, concentrated liquidity pools. Not only Uniswap, any concentrated liquidity pools, um, how to structure, um, if you need feedback on your strategy, right? We can We can help with all that, right? So as you get deeper into this, it does get more complex, but it's not very complicated once it's understood, right? So anyways... Thank you for watching. Thank you for bearing with me, whoever lasted this long. I don't even know if anyone's going to watch it this far, but uh, thanks again. Uh, please leave a comment below, um, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks.